Being a youth baseball coach takes a special person, and I applaud you for doing your best for your players and giving them the best youth baseball experience possible. Even though there are tons of amazing qualities that make up a youth baseball coach, I think that all those qualities can be boiled down into three main big qualities. In today's Bullpen Bulletin, I'm discussing my top three best qualities of a youth baseball coach. If you do these three things for your players, you're going to bring out the best in your players every single day. Hey team, I'm Coach Hart, this is Building Better Baseball, and this is the best place for baseball education. Thanks for tuning in today. If you're a youth baseball player or a coach, then you've come to the right place. I come out with weekly videos to help you in all areas of baseball, so if you'd like more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And be sure to stick around to the end, because I always have a free PDF downloadable guide for you that you can take with you after this video is done. But now, let's get into the three top qualities of a youth baseball coach. The first quality of a great coach, we hear this one a lot, is they focus more on player development rather than winning. Now we hear this one so much that you should focus on player development over winning and wins in the win column, and that's really for good reason. Now don't mishear me, I'm not saying that winning is not important, because it is. Winning is fun and it does play a part in developing a successful player, but what I'm saying in this video is that coaches should not focus only on winning and not player development, or they shouldn't have a bigger focus on winning rather than player development. The most important thing with this is that your players know that you're there for them and that they and their success are the most important thing to you rather than getting another win in the win column. If you're focusing all about wins and all you're talking about is we need to win this game and we don't have enough wins or we have a losing record or we need a winning record, that sends a message to your players that that's all you care about, that you don't care about their development and their future success because that's not what you're talking about. Your players are obviously listening to you, right? They're listening to what you're saying. So if you continuously talk about winning and winning games and why did we lose and you're not continuing to talk about player development and what's best for their future, then your players think that they're not important and that all you care about is winning games and not them as a person and a player. Because focusing on player development really makes your players feel that they are important and that they mean something to the team. Everybody in youth baseball, especially the players, want to feel important and they want to feel part of the team and that they're contributing and improving with the team. So if you're a coach who focuses on player development and really getting after trying to make your players better, then that makes them feel important and that shows them that you care about them, you care about their development, and you care about their future success. Because at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to do. Your, your job as a coach is to get them better, is to make them better, not just to get another win. Right? And the message that you send to your players is very important. If you focus more on player development, you're showing your players that you care about them and that they are important to you and important to the team. However, if you focus a lot on winning and the wins column, then that's the message that you're showing your players is that all you care about is wins. The last thing I want to say with this point is the thing that a lot of coaches don't understand is that if you focus on player development and getting your players better, that in turn will transition to wins. That will bring the wins. If you focus more on player development rather than wins, then that means that your players will get better because that's where your focus is and that will translate out to the field in games, which means that you will win more games, right? So if you focus on player development, that will lead to wins. However, if you focus on wins, that will not always lead to player development and getting your players better. The number two quality of a great coach is great coaches don't change their players, they improve them. So the one thing with this point that we always have to remember is that every player is different and there is not one way to perform a skill. Whether it be hitting or pitching or fielding, there's not only one way to do it. If you think about the major leagues, how many batting stances do you see? How many different pitching motions do you see? Every single player is unique and a great youth coach takes what a player has and takes what's comfortable for them and he improves on it rather than trying to change the whole player's skill set and trying to fit them in a cookie cutter. So even though every player is unique, obviously there are core components to every single skill, like hitting. In hitting, you have to have a load, you have to have a swing, right? In pitching, you have to have the leg lift, you have to have the split. There are core components that you can build around, but all of the other details of the motion and the skill are unique to the player. Each player has different things that are comfortable for them and great youth coaches notice that and they improve that specific player's skill based on what's comfortable for them. 
So the way I always picture it is if you picture a canvas, right, that you can paint on and there is an outline of something that you can paint, right? That outline is the core components of the skill, like hitting and pitching, right? The paint that you choose, it can be any color. You can choose to paint that painting any color that you want, and that is the same thing as the uniqueness of each player. So what you're doing is you're taking the core components, you're taking that core foundation of that canvas and that outline, and you're taking the player's uniqueness and what's comfortable for them, and that is the paint. All players could paint that canvas all sorts of different colors, whatever's comfortable for them and whatever they like. And as a coach, if you're trying to change a player, you are basically taking that player's canvas and you are painting it on for them, whether they like it or not. You're trying to change their swing to something that only you know, and it may not be comfortable for them and it may not work for them. That's when you're trying to change them. If you're trying to improve them, all you're doing with the canvas analogy, you're just teaching them how to paint better within the lines and put their colors that they want on the canvas, and you're teaching them exactly how to paint onto the canvas. Translate that to the skill, you're taking what's comfortable for them and what they like to do, and you're improving on it. So let's say, for example, in the hitting stance, the player in their hitting stance, they like to load by rocking. They don't like to take a step right? But if you as a coach, if all you know how to teach is to step and load and you're trying to teach them how to step and load, that's not helping them and that's not helping them improve. That's not improving them. That's trying to change them. What you as a coach in that situation should do is take their rock and just make it better. Have them focus on the pitcher and have them get their timing better using their rock that is comfortable for them and that's what they like. That is improving on what they already have. You have to remember that players want to feel unique and different. Everybody wants to feel unique and different. They don't want to feel like another cut out of a cookie cutter. So if you take a cookie cutter and you just make the same cookies, that's like having the same swing for every single player. That doesn't exist. There are tons of different motions for a baseball swing. So as a coach, make sure you improve on what they already have and don't try and change them to something that may not work for them. The third quality of a great youth coach is they have a long-term focus and they focus long-term for their players. So as a youth coach, it's very important not to have short-term vision and short-term focus. Not only have focus on the next game or this season. You have to be thinking for your players from their standpoint, they're gonna be playing for as long as they can, right? So as a coach, make sure you always think long-term for your players to the next season into playing at the higher levels. Because youth baseball, it only lasts so long, right? You only play youth baseball up until you're about 12 or 13, maybe 14, right? That's when kids start getting into high school. And as a youth coach at the 9 and 10U level, you have to be thinking about when they get into high school. What kind of practices and what kind of habits can they do now that will help them get to the high school level and play at that next level? That's what all coaches should be thinking about, not just this season. Not what is great for this season and how can we win this season. It's what's great and works for this player and how can I improve them and create good habits now that will pay off when they get into high school and even beyond into college and even minor leagues and major leagues. And it's really important to make sure that your players are on the same page with you and you let them know that that's where your mind is at. Always be talking about the future, even when they're 9, 10 years old, right? Talk about playing in high school. I want everybody to wear a high school uniform. This is what you're going to do in high school. When you get to high school, they're going to be doing this. So as a coach, always make sure that you're always talking about long term, past this season and past to the next season and past youth baseball. Some players, youth baseball is all they're going to experience because they're not talented enough to make a high school team. And that's completely fine. Talking long term, even for them, it's helpful for them because talking and thinking long term doesn't have to do with just baseball, right? So it's going to help them too, even if they don't play at the higher level. And the last thing is always make sure your parents are on board as well. Make sure that they hear you talking long term, that they hear you saying high school baseball so that they're in that mindset as well. So this is definitely an underrated quality of a youth baseball coach, but it's a very important quality that all coaches should have is have a long term focus for your players that goes past this game and this season and youth baseball in general. Always talk about that higher level of play and make sure the parents are on board. Make sure they hear you talk about that and they know that your philosophy is long term. You know it's another great quality of a youth baseball coach? A great practice plan. And I have something that's going to help you out. If you look down in the description, you'll find a free two-hour practice plan. 
And this practice plan has two practice blueprints and it lays out by the minute a full two hour practice plan. So this free two hour practice plan is yours. If you just click the link down in the description, it'll take you to my website, buildingbetterbaseball.com and you can grab your free two hour practice plan. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope this video helped clarify for you some of the top qualities of a youth baseball coach so you can bring your best self and deliver your best coaching for your players every single day. I'll see you next week for another edition of the Bullpen Bulletin.